Hey guys, more Blakey here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to give your player some fluent animations, specifically idle, running and jumping. So stay tuned and subscribe if you enjoy. So at the moment, if I press play, I can move left and right and I can jump. But as you can see, there is no animations at all. I've just got a flat frame. And in this scene, I have a main camera. I've got a player, a platform, a canvas for our health bar, an event system for the canvas and just a gradient background. And for the player's current sprite, I've just got one of the idle animation frames. One thing it's important to note is that to get animations working, we're gonna need a number of sprite sheets, specifically an idle, a jump, and a run. Now, sprite sheets are a whole different topic, but essentially they are separate PNG images for every frame of your animation. So make sure to go and get some of those set up in either Photoshop, A Sprite, etc. So to get animations working, we're gonna to need to create some animations on our player. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna click on our player here, and I'm going to go to our animation tab and if you don't have that you can go to window animation and then just press animation here I like to have it docked at the bottom here and then just go ahead and click create and we're going to start off with an idle animation so I'm just going to type in idle anim now from here if I drag my project tab and I just move it to the side here we can locate our idle png and once we've split it up using these settings such as setting our sprite mode to multiple and going into our sprite editor and slicing each frame up using these settings up here. For example, I want 32 pixels per unit, so I'm gonna make sure to click 32. This may not matter for your game, but for me, this is what I like to have. And then I'm gonna make sure this is selected to multiple, then go to sprite editor, click on slice at the top here. I'm gonna go from automatic to grid by cell size, and then we can change this to 32 by 32, press slice, and it will automatically slice up every image I have. Then I can go ahead and click apply, and close this and this is how I have all of my PNG frames split up into individual images. From here I'm going to drag all of these frames so I'm going to click the first one shift click the last one and it will select all of them and just drag them onto our animations here. Now from here each of these blue dots are every frame. I'm going to I'm going to change the sample size to something like 12. Slow it right down. Now if I click on our player here add one of the idols for our sprite in our sprite renderer just so we can see it. Now if I click play you can see I've got a little idle animation going. And it's really great because we can preview this right in the editor. Now I'm gonna do this for our running animation and our jump animation. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna click under here, create new clip. And I'm gonna say run anim. Then I'm gonna close this down, go to my run frames, select and shift select the first and last. I'm gonna to go to 12 samples, I'm gonna hit play. And we can see that is a pretty good speed. We could even speed this up just a little bit to something like 16. And now he is fully sprinting. And finally, I'm gonna create one for jump. And I'm gonna select my jump frames. Now these ones are a little bit more interesting. We can drag these around for this to fit more. Cause at the moment, yeah, that doesn't look too great. And even if we slow down the sample size, this would still look very weird. So what I like to do is drag these really far out to something like 20. And then just keep testing until we have something we like. I personally feel like this would be good because the player would hit the floor before it reaches these last two frames. So we've got a nice long amount of animation airtime before we hit the ground again. And now if we select our player, you can see there's actually a new tab that's been added and that is our animator component. This was automatically created the minute we create an animation for this game object and the same would go for any other. And now we have an animation controller, which is right here. And we're gonna be using this because we need to set up some parameters which we can then use in our code to determine when we want to run, jump, and move. So I'm gonna grab a new tab now. I'm gonna to go to Window, Animation, and we need an Animator tab. I like to put this next to my Game tab. I'm gonna drag this out slightly, and you can see if we select our player, we've got a couple of animations here. These are the ones we just made. So this is an animation controller, and this is how we can visualize how animations will transition. So right off the bat, from the start of the game, it will entry into our idle animation, which is actually what we want. And what we're gonna do here, we're actually gonna make a little triangle. So I'm gonna select parameters up here. I'm gonna create some. So I'm gonna create some Booleans, which are true or false statements. And the first one is gonna be is running. And the second one is gonna be is jumping. And we are now gonna use these. So if I right click on my idle animation, I'm gonna click make transition. And I'm gonna move this to the run animation and select. And now we've got a transition from our idle animation to our run animation. But we need a parameter to determine this, otherwise it will do it straight away and we would just be running forever. So I'm gonna select the transition in the middle 
I'm going to open up these settings. I'm going to disable exit time because I don't want there to be any time in between the transition. I just want it to switch straight away. I'm going to turn the transition duration to zero. And I'm going to go down to conditions here and I'm hit the plus sign. And now you can see we've got some conditions and right off the bat, this is correct. We've got is running set to true. I'm also going to hit another plus sign for safety and make sure is jumping is set to false. Now we need to do the same the other way. So we're going to go run and make transition back to our idle. And we're going to pretty much follow the opposite route. So make sure our exit time is off and we have zero transition duration time. Add a condition, make sure is running is false and is jumping is false. Now from here, we can go back to our idle animation, make a transition, go to our jump and follow a similar process. We're going to set is jumping to true. And it doesn't matter whether we are running or not, as either way, we want to go to this jump animation. But it does matter when we go the other way. So if we go from jump to idle, we want to make sure exit time none, zero transition duration. We want to make sure we're not running and we're also not jumping. And likewise for running, if we make a transition from jump to run, is running to be true and is jumping to be false. And finally, to finish this off, run to jump, we are gonna set is jumping to true. And now in terms of our animation controller and components, that should be everything we have to do. All we need to do is go into our code now and configure this there. So I'm gonna do this via my player movement script. Now, a lot of our scripts for you guys watching may look different from mine, but the same methods will apply. So hopefully you can follow along. I'm gonna open this up in Visual Studio and I'm gonna reference our animator. So I'm gonna say public, animator anim and now we're going to be setting our booleans true and false manually via code so for a start in my code i use a float called move which is determined by the input of my left and right wasd components or the arrow keys so if they're being pressed their move is set to one or minus one if they're not they're being set to zero so what i can do is check to see if this move float is bigger than zero then that means the player is moving and i can set the is running ball to true and that's exactly what we're going to do. So I'm going to head into my update and I'm going to check if move is bigger or equal to 0.1. Now this isn't enough because this only means we are moving right. If we are moving left, the move is set to minus one. So I'm going to use this weird straight line, which is on the bottom left of my keyboard. I'm going to press it twice. This means or I'm going to do if move is smaller than or equal to minus 0.1 F. So if we are moving left or right, we're gonna go anim, which is what we just referenced at the top, dot set ball. And we're gonna reference our is running, and we're gonna set this to true. And we can use an else statement underneath this to set it to false. Anim dot set ball is running false. So what we're saying here is if move is bigger than 0.1 or smaller than minus 0.1, then the player is moving, therefore we set is running to true. Otherwise, we're gonna set it to false because the player is standing still. Now, to determine jumping, I'm gonna use on collision enter, as in this script, I don't have a way to check for the ground, as this is a Unity project I use for tutorials and we just haven't got around to that for this script. Regardless, you can do this via ray casting or on collision enter, whatever you want. I'm gonna do on collision enter as it's simple and easy to understand for you guys. So I'm gonna head down here outside of our update function I'm gonna type in void on collision enter 2D as I'm in 2D. I'm gonna change the collision 2D to other. And I'm gonna check for if other dot game object dot compare tag is equal to ground, then we know that anim dot set ball is jumping is currently false. What we're saying here, if we are colliding with the ground, then we are not jumping so we can set it to false. And the reason I'm using this tag right here is because we're gonna go back in the editor and define any platform that the player stands on with this tag. Now I'm gonna use the opposite function void on collision exit 2D and basically do the same thing. So we can copy this code inside, paste it in here, set is jumping to true because we are not on the ground and we should be just about done in the code here. Now back in the editor, make sure to select any platform that you have on and give it the tag of ground. If you do not have one, you can add tag, press plus sign, type in ground with a capital G, don't forget. Go back to your platform and then add the tag. That's very important. Don't forget to add the tag after you create it. 
And finally, if we select our player here, we have that anim variable that we actually need to assign. Now you can do this via script, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna assign it manually. So you can just drag your animator straight into this tab here, hit save. And just like that, you can see we've got all of our animations working perfectly. When we stop, we idle. When we move left or right, we run. And regardless of whether we're standing still or running, we transition to the jump animation, which is absolutely great. And when we land from our jump, if we're moving, we move into the run. And if we're not, we move straight into the idle. So this is working absolutely perfectly. Now what's great about the animation controller is it's very expandable and you can add in a bunch of extra animations that you'd like. But guys, I hope this video helped you. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.